Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. Thanks for clicking on. This video is part of a special video series inspired by you guys. I've been asked before for a recipe or sausage book, which I don't have, so I thought I would share my favorite book with you, which is Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage by Stanley and Adam Marinsky. It is my favorite book. I think it's got great information in there for beginners and experts alike. And uh, to celebrate my favorite book, I reached out to Stanley Marinsky and he gave me permission to do Marinsky March. So we're gonna do a recipe out of this book every day of March. And all the recipes and all the processes are right out of the book, which will be in the link below. That is a link to the book will be in the description down below. So without any further ado, let's get into Marinsky March. Hey there guys, welcome to another episode of Marinsky March. I'm super excited for this one. I've always wanted to make it. It'd be my first time making this and uh, I heard about it when I was a kid in social studies. It's pemmican. Uh, there's no write up for pemmican. I'm coming off of page 561. If you've got the book at home, home production of quality meats and sausage. Pemmican, it doesn't have any write up, but if this is correct, which it might not be, uh, what I learned back in social studies is it was a Native American or an indigenous food. They would take the uh, offal fat off an animal and beat it uh, along with maybe some dried meat uh, off the carcass and they would work berries into it and it would be like a shelf stable commodity for them uh, back on the, in the plains and before Europeans ever made it over. So I've, oh, I've heard about it, I've never had it. I'm real excited that it's in the book here and we're gonna make it together. Um, so guys, like I said, the recipe's on page 561 and what we're basically gonna do is we're gonna take some dried meat, blend it with some dried berries, and then pour some beef fat or beef suet that we've rendered down onto the mixture and then dry it out. And it'll be shelf stable, ready to go kind of meat protein, fat, fruity bars. Um, the process is all in here. I'm gonna follow it along. So if you've got the book at home, you know we need some jerky or some dried meat and we'll need some dried berries. So I'm gonna have to make all that ahead of time. I got myself here some dried berries, a little bit of uh, blackberry, cherry, blue barb, or blue barb, blueberry. And uh, I'm gonna make the jerky. I got some nice uh, quarter inch thick cut hip meat here, so I'm gonna do it right from scratch. So I'm gonna get all this stuff dehydrating. For the jerky, I'm not using the recipe out of here. I think that maybe the, um, real traditional stuff probably had no seasoning on it. It was probably just dried. But I'm gonna put just a little bit of salt and cure on my jerky and dry it out in the dehydrator as well. So I'll bring you guys in. Uh, we'll load these up and uh, get you a picture of that. All right, guys, we'll get them berries going first. I'll confess, I've never dehydrated anything before in my life. So I'm assuming you'd probably wanna use fresh berries, but all I could get my hands on here before the video started was some frozen berries. I'm not sure how well they're gonna dehydrate, so I'm gonna get them in there first. So I think all we're gonna do is I'm just going to spray each one of these sheets with Pam and get it loaded up with berries. I'm gonna give it a good heavy coat. Nothing's worse than stuff sticking. Okay guys, they're all lubed up, and I'm assuming I'm just gonna spread them out as evenly as possible so that uh, the air can circulate between them. I feel like it's kinda just like doing jerky. Berries and jerky are the same thing. I've also never used this dehydrator before, so we'll see how this whole process goes. It's fun, I never get to play around like this. Anyways, I'll get the rest of these loaded up, and I'll show you what they look like in the dehydrator. All right, guys, so I got that uh, dehydrator fired up. Very cool dehydrator. I got it off Amazon, and uh, if it works well, I'll pop it in the link below. But just going off the description up top here, guys, the dehydrator says to do fruits at, at uh, 57 to 63 degrees Celsius, 135 to 145 Fahrenheit. So it's preheated. We'll pop them in there. and see how she goes. All right, I might do one more trade just in case. I don't know how much they shrink up. 
But anyways, guys, we'll come back in. I think I got it set for four hours. I have no idea how long it takes. But we'll come check on it in four hours. So our berries for the pemmican's prepped. Uh, they took quite a while. It was about 14 hours to get these guys to dehydrate down, but they really, really shrunk down when they did. But they're nice and dry now and firm. So we'll add these to our fat and meat mix. Should I try one? Yeah, they're nice and dense. So we'll add this to our fat and meat mix for the pemmican. All right, guys, so we got the berries going back there. Now it's time for the dry meat. Uh, in the book, it does call for beef jerky, which I do have an episode of that in Marinsky Marsh somewhere. Maybe I'll link it right here, or maybe it'll be here. But I'm just gonna do just salt and cure on this, rub it in real good, revacuum pack it. Uh, you should probably leave it for 12 to 24 hours and then I'm gonna dehydrate it just like I did the berries and follow that recipe. So, like I said earlier, lean hip meat, cut a quarter inch thick, like so. Bada bing, bada boom. Salt and cure. Sprinkle a bit on there. Mix it in. The salt finds the cuts in your fingers quick if you're not wearing gloves. Awesome, that's all there is to that guys. I'm gonna vac pack it, let it sit in the fridge for at least 12 hours, and then dehydrate it. Then we'll carry on with the pemmican. All right, guys. So the pemmican meat is ready. It's been marinating. We're getting closer to the final product, getting more excited. So now I'm just gonna rack this stuff on my little dehydrator sheets, and have, they can have their turn in the dehydrator. But I'm just gonna spray them all down with Pam. Give them a nice heavy shot, because I know well, I don't know, I've never dehydrated jerky before. I've always just run it in the smokehouse, but I know it can really get sticking to them sheets in the smokehouse, so don't cheap out with the Pam. Pam vegetable spray? Maybe Pam is a Canadian brand. I don't know. Canola harvest. Open up our pemmican meat. And I'm gonna do it the same way I do it in my smokehouse. I'll spread them out or lay them out here. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit of space so that none of them are physically touching one another to allow that uh, air to circulate between them. That means you get a nice even dry because if they're touching one another, that surface between the two is never gonna see that warm air. It's never gonna dry out. I'll get these racked guys. You don't gotta watch me do that. And then uh, we will show you them getting loaded into the dehydrator. So I got them racked up like that, just so they're not touching. And uh, now we'll pop them into the dehydrator. Okay, so I got the little dehydrator pre-warmed up. It says in the book to dehydrate, not for a certain period of time, but we're shooting for a, when you pull it out of the dehydrator and you bend it, it breaks, kind of cracks away, but it, it doesn't snap. It's not too dry where it just breaks in half. So we're gonna smoke it at 60 to 60, or smoke it, dehydrate it at 60 to 65 degrees Celsius until we hit that temperature. So I don't know how long we'll be doing this for guys, but I'm gonna pop the pemmican on top. And shortly after this, I'm gonna load in, actually I'm gonna start this at the bottom. I'm gonna load in Stan and Adam Rinsky's roast, uh, roast beef, beef jerky. So. We'll come check on them. I don't know. Let's say, I'm guessing four hours in a minimum. We'll come back in four hours. Alrighty there, guys. So the dry meat for the pemmican is now done. Um, it was in there for 10 hours. And we do the test here. It bends and breaks, but it doesn't snap. You can see that little bit there. That's the test. That's nice looking jerky. So we'll uh, take this, chop it up fine, and add it to our fat and berry mixture. We gotta make that fat up yet though, so that's what's next. Okay guys, so the next step at Pemmican is we gotta melt this suet fat down. Uh, this is the suet fat, AKA the kidney fat. Uh, so it's off the, it surrounds the organs, uh, the kidneys in particular, inside the cavity of the beef. So it's saved during the slaughter process. So it's kind of really crumbly stuff and it's uh, got a low viscosity point, which means it melts quick, but it's hard. When it solidifies, it's very dense. So I'm just gonna chop it up into smaller chunks, throw it in the frying pan and get it melting down for our pemmican, which I'm getting excited for. 
Okay guys, so I got the suet chopped down into a bunch of small chunks. I have one kilogram of suet total uh, because the recipe calls for 500 grams if you're following along, but I'm doing a double batch. Some with the Marinsky jerky, some with some salt and pepper, uh, dehydrated beef. Actually, there's no pepper, it's just salt. So I'm gonna pop it in the frying pan and get it going. There it all is, chopped up. I kind of got it on a medium heat. I don't want to burn it. And I'm just gonna babysit it and stir it around periodically. Once all the fat melts down, it's gonna be kind of like a yellowy pool of fat. And I'm gonna strain out some of the stuff in here. Like there's some little bits of veins and stuff that we're probably not gonna to wanna to be chewing on forever. So I'm gonna strain that out once it's all melted down. All right there guys, you can see that fat starting to melt down just a little bit there. So it's gonna be a big pool of this eventually. So I just keep kind of tossing it around and mixing it, making sure it doesn't burn. All right guys, we're getting close to the final product here. It's really boiling off. I've got quite a pool of fat here. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer for them, some of the bigger chunks. I've just kind of been breaking them up. But you can see here, you know, we got like a big chunk of a vein. We're gonna to wanna to strain that out. But it's getting looking nice here, guys. Zoom you in so you can see. Nice pool. And uh, you wouldn't believe how good this smells. Like, I was thinking whip this into a jerky or cook french fries in it or something. Holy moly. I got a feeling it's really going to add some wicked good flavor to this uh, pemmican. But I'll show you it when it's all done. All right, guys. There, I think we're just about done. You know, lots of this stuff is uh, it's kind of just the connective tissues that are left. Everything else is liquefied. I don't want to burn the oil. Uh, so it's just kind of some of this stuff here. Looks like crackling from pork if you ever deep fried pork skins is what it looks like. So I think that's uh, going to be good. I'm just going to kill the heat and let it cool down just a little bit because I have a plastic colander. I don't want it to melt the colander. Got hot oil going through there. And uh, we'll do that. I'll just kill it and I'll show you guys it getting strained. All right, guys, only a few steps away from finishing up this pemmican here. Uh, I did pull out or hold back the jerky from the beef jerky episode uh, because I thought maybe that's what he was referring to in the recipe book, as well as just the salted and dehydrated beef here. Uh, so the next step is we're just gonna chop this up, blend it up into small little bits. Then I'm gonna add the berries that I dehydrated the other day. One cup of dehydrated berries to each one of the mixtures. And then we're gonna cook up some beef suet, beef fat into a liquid, pour it over these guys, mix them, cool them down, and we'll have pemmican. So let's do that right now. All right, so I'm just gonna take these chunks of dried salted meat and break them down just a little bit smaller pieces for the food presser, food processor, which I bought special from Marinsky March so that you guys can relate to some of the equipment I'm using. Sometimes I got some kind of commercial grade stuff which you guys might not have at home. So I figured if I use a food processor, it'd be more relatable. It's all ready to go in the grinder here, blender here. I'll bring you in for an action shot. All right, guys, there it is. Here's our food processor on sale. It's a special one. See how she does. I do this in half loads. Ha, throw her all in there. See how she goes. <laughs> Wide open, first try. All right, here we go. Wish her luck. Now it says we're shooting for a dust, kind of like a fine powder. So I got some chunks in here, a little bit big yet. Let's, uh, let's keep, keep chopping. So we're getting closer guys, hasn't been too long. Kind of got some powder like stuff here. I'm gonna give it another 30 seconds, maybe a spinning. There we go, I think that's what we're shooting for. So now I'm gonna blend up that other batch of jerky from the Marinsky jerky recipe. Okay, there's the Marinsky jerky in the blender for round two. See you in a couple minutes. That first round took about four minutes of chopping in this little blender to give you a rough idea. So I'll see you in about four minutes. All right, guys, a couple minutes gone by. 
This one powdered up a little bit quicker. There you go, quite a bit finer powder on this one. So I'll see, we'll see the texture difference when that comes around. Now our next step here, guys, is we're gonna need a cup of, berry, cup of berries blended for each batch. So I will throw those on there and get them blending right now. Pre-measured out, one cup of mixed berries, fresh out of the dehydrator. Give it a quick spin. So I just did them for about a minute. They're still in kind of pretty big chunks, but broke them down a little bit, I guess, for flavor. I'm assuming this step in the recipe is to kind of simulate uh, the traditional, I think the indigenous or native people used to really pound all this stuff together in a kind of mortar pestle or something like that into a paste. Uh, so I think that's kind of what this step simulating. I'll add that to our jerky. Bowl's getting full. And I'll do another cup for our other batch. Okay, so here's my little setup, guys. Here's the plastic colander. And this, I don't really have molds, so I'm just gonna try doing them at the bottom of a Schaefer pan. They're gonna be kind of skinny bars. That's okay, there's the one. Here's the Marinsky jerky. Get her back into position and I'll bring it over and we'll strain her out. Ooh, don't be dropping that stuff on you. Now, uh, in the book I think it says you can cool it down and then reheat it if you need, but I'm going to shoot to do it all in one step here. So, there's our impurities. I'm just going to push mush some of that through so I get every last little bit of that yummy beef fat. Those are just kind of little bits of connective tissues between the fats. Still dripping pretty good, so. This is kind of fun. I don't usually do stuff like this. This is out of the normal for me. I'm enjoying this. All right, that looks like it's about it. The effort isn't worth the rewards at this point. That's when we're done. There's that guy. Let's pour it over. Hopefully I got enough fat here to just cover everything. for both batches. This kind of counts as like deep frying them, I think, the berries and meat. Let's see how that does. Let's see if I got enough for both here. Oh yeah, it's gonna be just enough, I think. Oh, perfect, look at that. Recipe book nailed it. Just the right amount of fat to cover both here. So now I'm just gonna let them cool down, guys. And as they cool down, this one looks almost jet black. This one, you can see the little pink berries and cured meat. But uh, as that kidney fat cools down, and actually you can start to see it on the sides here of the tray, it's gonna be kind of these white looking bars. So I'm looking forward to trying this a lot. Stay tuned, last step is eating and uh, that'll wrap up the video. Here we are guys, the next day the pemmican has cooled down. Uh, as you can see, that fat has solidified. And on this side here, we have the salted beef and on this side here, we have the Marinsky jerky. I'm thinking, uh, I was reading the book after, I maybe should have gone to a finer powder and kind of mix this stuff up. Here's our thin little pemmican bar. They just pop right out of these molds. And if I had a little smaller mold, I'd have been able to get kind of a little bit bigger chunks. But here it is, guys. I'm looking forward to trying this. I've never had pemmican. I could see this being a super good snack or a survival food. If you were out uh, on the plains of North America, fat, meat, berries for vitamins. Oh yeah. Cut these down into bars. It's kind of like butcher brownies. All right, guys, I'm chunked down into little bite-sized bars. And this here is kind of what they look like. Little dehydrated kind of pellets with a bit of fat there. I think I should have mixed it up a little bit better and gone a little bit finer w when chopping in the food, presser, food processor. But uh, there's that one. Let's break this bar off here. Here's our berry one, all suspended in a fat mixture. I can see this being real high 
uh, density, like energy food if you're out traveling the plains, living a nomadic life. But let's give them a try here, guys. Okay, Rinsky Jerky first. Hmm. That's really cool. That's actually really neat. I've never had anything like it. I don't know how, how to describe it to you guys. Like it's like you got the little bit of beef jerky chunks in there, and then you bite it into kind of a dry, dense, intense, sweet berry. And lots of beef flavor from that kidney fat. You wouldn't need very many of these and it would keep you going all day long. Really cool. I do think if I was to do this again, I would use a little bit less fat. I, I kind of drowned it, or not drowned it then, but I covered the whole jerky mixture with fat. I think I maybe would just pour it a little bit in and mix it in to hold it. There's a fair bit of fat, leaves a little bit of coating in my mouth. Um, but other than that, the flavor's good, the jerky in there is good, the berries in there is good. The fat in there, it's got that real nice beef flavor. So there is the Marinsky jerky. Let's give the salted beef one a try. Ah, really neat guys. Same again, the berries are way more flavorful in this one because there's no flavors coming out of the beef jerky. Also quite good. If you're hiking out in the mountains, throw a couple of these in your backpack for lunch. Wouldn't take up much space. And uh, it would get you a whole whack load of energy. So guys, this is the Pemmican episode from Rinsky March. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll be doing more recipes out of home production of quality meats and sausage throughout the month, so stay tuned for that.